Title of the presentation is Gene Expression of the Teat Canal Epithelium in Tri and Lactating Cows. Okay, thank you everyone for being here today, listening to this presentation. I'm the last speaker of the morning session, so I bet you are quite hungry, me too. Um, so I will do it quickly and with no pain. Um, Where's the pointer? Ah, okay. So, yeah, the, we analyzed the gene expression of the teeth canal epithelium in dry and in lactating cows. It's, it's a work that we've been doing for a year or so. And in this presentation, I will give you uh, some definitions for you to know what I'm talking about, for all of us to be at the same page. Um, I will show you some histology uh, pictures of the teeth canal. I will put you in the context of the research we are doing, give you a little bit of background of what we are doing, and then I will show you the study. I will describe the study with the materials and methods, the results, and finally the conclusions. Um, to give you some definitions, we know that the teeth canal is this area here, the last centimeter or so at the tip of the teeth is covered by a epithelium, keratinized epithelium, limited dorsally by the Fustenberg rosette here that falls off mucosa and is sealed by a keratin plug that is only fully formed at the end of lactation. Uh, as I said before, we concentrated our research in that bit of the teeth. Um, this is a proximal cut of the teeth canal showing the Fustimer rosette. Here with the folds that we all know about is covered by, uh, by a bilayer of cells with some white cells here that probably they get to the area when, when the cow is infected through the teeth canal. Um, then we've got a mid cut of the teeth canal fully covered by keratin. Those were 13 days approximately after drying off. We took those teeth from the cows and the distal end of the teeth shows how the stroma, like the, the body of the teeth, intersects with the epithelium. And finally, the layer of keratin here. We can see clearly here in the midsection how the teeth canal is formed by four layers of um, cells, the basal membrane, the spinostratum, the granulosum stratum, and finally, the keratinized stratum, the corneum stratum. Um, so we all know as well from previous studies that a delay in the closure of the teeth canal by the keratin plug at the end of lactation or the beginning of the dry period can increase the risk of mastitis during the dry period. Those 30 days that I think Peter was this morning talking about, 30 days of high risk, um, and we can see here how, and, and in a work that Dingwell did, in a review he did, comparing US cows with New Zealand cows, we can see that 50% of the high production cows, almost by the end of their dry off, remember that American cows only have 60 days of dry off, 50% of them have their teeth still open. In New Zealand and in low production uh, cows in the US and other countries, uh, it's only 20%, but getting through the dry period with an open teeth, it's a high risk for even 20% of the cows. Um, we can see in this slide here how the infection risk is very high in those 30 days that we mentioned before uh, at the beginning of the dry period. And then again, 
uh, around Calvin. Um, the question is, is there any difference, any relationship between uh, the teeth canal during lactation, at the end of lactation, and the teeth canal in the dry period? Is, is there any change, any difference between the teeth canal before and after dry off that can increase the risk of, for the cow to get mastitis? So we designed this study. The objective of this study is to investigate the changes in the gene expression of the teeth canal epithelium before and after drying off. So to do that, we took three biopsy samples from the teeth canal uh, with a method that we developed in an earlier study. And then again, we sampled the cows, three cows, 11 days later, different cows. We took another three biopsy samples of the dry cows, 11 days old dry cows. This is the kind of samples we get from the biopsies. We can see that through this sampling technique, we can preserve quite well the four layers of epithelium because we need to know, we wanted to know how different is this part of the teeth canal compared between a dry cow and a lactating cow. We took the samples, we analyzed the samples in Illumina High Sank. Sorry, we first extracted the RNA from them and then sent them to Illumina. And then compared the results with the full cattle genome. We analyzed the results using DSEC2 from our package, and we identified the significantly differentially expressed genes that we had between those groups of cows. What, what were the results we had? So the comparison showed that we had 22 downregulated genes and 14 upregulated genes different between a lactating cow and a dry cow. The genes codified for the keratin proteins were not really different between the groups. So I'd like to show you some of the genes we identified that were different between those groups of cows. Um, firstly, we identified that the heat shock protein family A was downregulated. Uh, this gene particularly is usually related to neutrophil degranulation and mitos mitosis. So the heat shock protein 8 is also related to cell proliferation and apoptosis and is very well studied in carcinogenesis in humans. Um, another interesting marker was the marker of proliferation that was downregulated in the dry cow. So that means what I want to say with these three genes that I've just described is apparently the teeth canal is stopped multiplying during the dry period. So the synaptotagmin 4 also takes care of the vesicular trafficking in the cells may be suggesting that the cells during the dry period, the cells of the teeth canal had less activity. And finally, the kinesin family member 23 that is managing all the movements within the cell and is also involved in the mitosis pathway. Some of the upregulated genes that we had were also interesting to see the Tolac receptor 5 that many of you might know from immunity, that is a pathogen recognition and activation of innate immune responses, is involved in those processes and was upregulated. The Serpina 1 that uh, protects the tissue from enzymes mainly coming from neutrophils, and the peptide arginine deaminidase, maintains the hydration of the stratum corneal was upregulated. So what I'm trying to say with this is there are changes in the teeth canal 
and we have to relate them to activities. We are trying with this study to understand what the DIT canal is doing du during the dry period and how the DIT canal is working towards synthesizing that keratin plug that we all like to talk about. The keratins were, as I said, not significantly differentially expressed, significantly different, sorry, between the two periods, but still we found that some of the function of them were interesting to analyze. For example, some slightly down-regulated keratin-18 is involved in the interleukin-6 mediated barrier protection. Um, another interesting one, for example, keratin-6A, down-regulated, that is involved in peptides that have antimicrobial activity. And the keratin-17 that is, manages or is involved in epithelial proliferation and regulation of immune response in skin. Some of the upregulated genes had also some interesting functions. Uh, for example, this one, keratin-14, enhanced the mechanical pro properties of the keratin, so of the, sorry, of the keratins in vitro, and maybe it's doing that with the epithelium of the DIT canal as well. Um, so, yeah, very interesting um, findings in this study. And out of that data, we concluded that, yeah, we have 36 differentially expressed genes in the TIT canal when we compare the lactating cow the, the, in the final days of lactation and 11 days after being dried off. There are differences between them. The cell proliferation and the immune response in the teeth canal appear to be diminished. Remember that we saw those downregulated genes that were related to immune response and to mitosis. Um, all these genes will be part of a future study that it's already undergoing. That we will analyze the samples using nanostring. We will analyze more than 125 teeth canal and control samples at four different stages of the dry period to really have a better picture of how the teat is defending herself during the dry period, how the teat is behaving during that period. That is something that we don't know yet. Um, we need these further detailed studies on the physiology of the keratin plug because we are trying to help the cow to defend herself better and if we don't know how she's doing at the moment, how she beat the bacterial infections now, we cannot improve her protection from mastitis in the early dry period. Have you got any, sorry, questions?